Hello everyone and welcome to our session. It's for the third secondary year, sociology and economics section. In this mathematics chapter, functions of economics and social sciences, we will talk about the supply, demand and elasticity of the demand. Also, we will talk about the depreciation. This is the third session in this chapter. We said before that this chapter is divided into three parts. The first part was about the cost, revenue and the profit functions. We saw these concepts in sessions 1 and 2. The second part is about the demand, supply and elasticity of the demand. The third part is about the depreciation of an asset. Today we are going to be talking about the second and the third parts in details. At the end of this session, you will be able to calculate the demand and supply of a product for a given unit price. You will determine the equilibrium price and the quantity associated to this price. You will also determine the elasticity of the demand with respect to the unit price. We will also study the values of the elasticity and interpret the obtained results economically. And then we will calculate the depreciation of an asset, its annual depreciation, its depreciation and value after two years of service. Let's first start with the demand and supply functions. In this part, we will denote P, the unit price. So when I say the unit price of a product, the unit sometimes is formed with one item or more than one item, it depends on the question. So P is the price of one unit, not of one object. What is the demand? The demand of a product is considered as the quantity that will be sold at a price P during the unit of time. So the demand is the quantity bought by people. It's a function of the unit price and it is denoted by D of P. What about the supply? The supply of a product is the quantity assured by the producers to the market. So the supply is the quantity distributed to the market. And it's also a function of the unit price and it's denoted as S of P. Some remarks. Usually, as the price increases, the demand function remains decreasing while the supply function is increasing. And why is that? If the price of an object increases, we will see less people buying this object. So, the quantity remaining in the market will be more and more increasing while the demand, which is the quantity bought, will remain decreasing since less people are buying this product. Another remark, if for a value P0 of the unit price, the demand is equal to the supply, we say that the market is at equilibrium. So if all the quantity that is produced or that is distributed to the market is bought by people, we say that the market is at equilibrium. In this case, the price of this product will be called the equilibrium price. So the price at which people are buying is the equilibrium price and the quantity bought which is equal to the supply, will be the equilibrium quantity. Let's see this figure together. Notice that the green function is the demand function and the blue one is the supply function. Notice that the demand is a decreasing function while the supply is an increasing function when the price increases. The two functions intersect at a point which is the equilibrium point and the coordinates of the equilibrium point are 2 and 3 which means at the price of 2 units of price, 3 units will be bought. So the equilibrium price is 2 in monetary pounds and the equilibrium quantity is 3. Check this example, the weekly demand and supply schedule for a brand of soft drink at various prices between $1 and $5 is shown below. Notice for example, for a price of $1, the quantity supplied is 600 units and the quantity demanded is 1,400. We notice that these two quantities are not equal, but I want you to observe closely the price in dollars when it's a 3, the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded are both 1,000, which means that for this value and for this price, the market is at equilibrium. At this price, the demand for drinks by students is equal to the supply, so the market will be at equilibrium, which means 1,000 drinks will be offered for sale at $3 and 1,000 will be bought, so no excess in demand or supply at this price. Now a graphical interpretation of this equilibrium, so the blue line is the line for demand and the brown one is for the supply. Notice that these two lines intersect at a point of coordinates 3, 1000, which means that the market is at equilibrium for the price of $3. The equilibrium price, which is the abscissa of this point 
of intersection is equal to three dollars and the ordinate which is one thousand is equal to the equilibrium quantity so for a price of three dollars one thousand soft drinks are bought an algebraic interpretation of this equilibrium the demand function of this soft drink can be modeled as d of p is equal to negative 200 p plus 1600 while its supply function can be modeled as s of p equals 200 p plus 400 where p is the unit price notice that the coefficient of p in d of p is a negative value so as we said before the demand function is decreasing while the coefficient of p in the supply function is a positive value which confirms what we said before that the supply function is an increasing function now the question is solve the equation d of p equals s of p and determine the equilibrium price and its corresponding quantity when we solve this equation it means we're finding the intersection or the price for which the demand is equal to the supply so i'm going to take the given expressions i will isolate the variable which will give me negative 400 p is equal to negative 1200 leading to p equals 3. what is this value of p this is the price at which the demand and the supply are equal which means the equilibrium price is three dollars and the equilibrium quantity is found by replacing p by three in one of the two expressions demand or supply which will give me 1000 drinks confirming the graphical interpretation what is the elasticity of the demand First of all, we need to know that in normal situations, a change in the price of a product affects its demand. How? Let's say we want to buy a product. So we ask about its price. If we notice that its price increased, we might not buy the product anymore. On the other hand, if we notice that the price of a product decreased, we will buy it more and more, which means that more quantity will be bought. So the cheaper the item, the more the demand. This is why we say that the price of a product affects the demand. Also, the elasticity means the sensitiveness or the responsiveness of demand to the change of the price. Just like we said, when the price increases, less units will be bought and when the price decreases, more units will be bought. So by definition, the elasticity of the demand is an economic principle that measures the extent of changes in the quantity demanded as a result of a price so this sensitiveness or responsiveness is measured by an economic principle which is the elasticity it measures how responsive the demand is to changes in the price of a given product and how do i calculate the elasticity of the demand it's a function of the unit price also and it's defined as e of p equals negative p multiplied by d prime of p over d p where d prime is the derivative of the demand function here we have three cases if e of p zero is greater than one we say that the demand is elastic for the price p zero if e of p zero is equal to one we say that the demand has a unit elasticity for the price p zero and if e of p is between 0 and 1, we say that the demand is inelastic for the price p0. An economic interpretation, so if in the question they're asking you to interpret economically the result of e of p0 for a specific unit price, you need to say that starting from p0, if the price increases by 1%, then the demand decreases by e of p0%, the obtained value, and you follow it by the percent symbol. This is an application. The demand function of a certain product is modeled as d of p equals negative p plus 5, where p is between 0 0.2 and 4. Denote by e of p the elasticity of the demand with respect to the unit price. The question is to express e of p in terms of p. I have the demand function, I find its derivative. So since d of p is equal to negative p plus 5, remember that we're finding the derivative with respect to p. So d prime of p will be equal to negative 1. And now I replace in the formula of e of p. I have e of p equals negative p, d prime p over d p, which will be p over negative p plus 5. A numerical application now calculates e of 3, is the demand elastic give an economical interpretation so we are going to replace p by 3 in the obtained function we have e of 3 is equal to 1.5 remember that we compare the obtained value to 0 and 1 since i have 1.5 is greater than 1 we say that the demand is elastic 
And how do I interpret economically the obtained result? I say starting from 3 and the unit of price is 1000 Lebanese Lira. So it's starting from 3000 Lebanese Lira. If the price increases by 1%, the demand decreases by 1.5%. What is the revenue? The revenue R here is defined as the product of the unit price by the demanded quantity. So I have R of P is equal to P multiplied by the demand function. So it's P times D of P. Note that the unit of the revenue is the same as the unit of the unit price. And why? Since the demand function will give me the quantity. So the quantity over here is in units. So I have, let's say, 1000 units are bought. This is the demanded quantity. So when I multiply P by D of P, the unit of the whole function will be same as the unit of the unit price. So the revenue function takes its unit from P. If the unit price is in thousands of Lebanese Lira, then the revenue also will be in thousands of Lebanese Lira. Now this is an exercise. Express in dollars the revenue R of P in terms of P. So I have the so I have the demand function. The revenue function is obtained when we multiply P by the demand function. So I will have negative 200 P squared plus 1,600 P in dollars. Now I have a numerical application for P equals 2, which will give me R of 2 equals $2,400. And we remember from the previous sessions that the revenue is a price. It's the sum of money collected by an enterprise which means that it must be in a unit of price. This is why we said $2,400. Now in part three, calculate the unit price P if the revenue achieved is $2,750. So now I have the revenue. I will solve a second degree equation. By using the calculator, we will get that P is equal to $2.5 or P is equal to $5.5. Since we're talking about the same soft drink as seen in the example previously, we have that P is between 1 and 5. So the first value P equals 2.5 is an accepted value, while P equals $5.5 is a rejected value. Now, what is the depreciation of an item? I will start this part by an example. So let's say you have a car. You bought it for a specific price. The more you use the car, the less its price will be. So if you want to sell it after a specific period, you will notice that the price by which you will sell this car is much less than the price by which you bought the car previously. Another example, if you want to buy a second-hand car, which is a car that was already used, you notice that its price is cheaper than the price of a brand new car. Why is that? Since for some products, the more we use them, the less their value will be. So the value of such a product will decrease by years of service. And this is what we call the depreciation of an asset or the depreciation of a product. Let's see be the initial price of a given asset. S is the scrap value of this asset. And what is the scrap value? It's the value that decreases from the initial price by using the asset. And N is the lifetime period in years of the asset. So it's the years of service of a specific product. We define the total depreciation of the asset. A is equal to C minus S. The annual depreciation of the asset is equal to C minus S over N, which is the value that this asset will lose from its initial price per year of service. We have the depreciation after T years of service, the value lost from the initial price after specific years, it's equal to C minus S over N multiplied by T. And then I will subtract it from the initial price in order to know the value of this asset after T years. It will be C minus the whole depreciation after T years, which is C minus S over N multiplied by T. So in this way, I can find the total depreciation of the asset. I can find the annual depreciation of the asset, the depreciation after T years, and the value after T years of functioning. A numerical example, the motor of an elevator is bought for 15 million Lebanese Lira, and its scrap value is 3 million Lebanese Lira. Additionally, the cost of its transportation is 500,000 Lebanese Lira. The costs of gears and of installation are 1,500,000 Lebanese Lira. The first question is to calculate the annual depreciation if its useful lifetime is 20 years. 
So I need to find the annual depreciation, which is equal to C minus S over N. I have the initial price. I have the scrap value and I have 20 years of functioning, which will give me 600,000 Lebanese lira. This means that every year this motor will lose 600,000 from its value. In number two, what becomes the value of this motor after 10 years? So I need to find V of T, which is equal to C minus D of T. What is D of T? It's the depreciation after 10 years, and I have to subtract it from the initial price, which will be 15 million minus 600,000 multiplied by 10, 600,000. It's the annual depreciation, the value lost every year, multiplied by the number of years. In this case, V of 10 will be equal to 9 million Lebanese lira. In number 3, after how much time or how many years will its value become 10 million 800 thousand Lebanese lira? So here I have the final value after specific number of years and I need to find the number of years by which the value of the, of the motor will become as given. I will have to solve an equation, a first degree equation. So I have that V of T is equal to 10,800,000 Lebanese Lira. I replace V of T by the obtained expression in the previous part. I have 15 million Lebanese Lira minus 600,000 multiplied by T. It must be equal to 10,800,000. I solve for T. It will give me T is equal to 7 years which means after 7 years of using the motor, its value will become 10,800,000 Lebanese Lira. This was an exercise about the depreciation of an asset. Of course, there are different types of depreciation that you can calculate, not only the annual depreciation and the, and the depreciation after 3 years, as we saw previously in the explanation. This was the last exercise that we will solve in this session. To do more practice on this chapter, you can refer to your textbook pages 263 and 264. You have the exercises 13 to 16 in page 263 and problem number 1 in page 264. Thank you so much for your attention and stay safe.